What's going on, everybody? Seth Miranda here. This is Adderall Over Rewind. A uh, bunch of odd things have happened this week. Some nerd stuff has happened this week. Uh, let's start off with something that affects more of a mainstream type people. Instagram is calling fake accounts using a new AI tool. So what does this mean? Well, we've seen Instagram, which is owned by Facebook, actually start getting rid of fake spammy accounts, you know? Um, in, in fact, it's 1.5 billion to date that they've gotten rid of both in Facebook and Instagram together. Um, but now this is going after the people that are real people that have accounts, but are using third party services where they actually give their uh, login credentials, their password, and everything, so that that service can boost their likes, leave fake comments around uh, on other uh, pages just so that people notice their page and maybe go check out their page and boost their following. So uh, the fake uh, comments is a weird one, right? You see someone that, that goes like, rest in peace, grandma, and then someone writes, nice photo, man. It's like, what is that? Clearly it's a fake comment. Instagram is saying they have AI to spot that stuff now. So uh, what is this gonna go do going forward? Well, if they flag you, you're gonna get a notification that says, hey, we know what you're up to. Uh, don't freak out, but your numbers are gonna deplete down and uh, chill out, pretty much. So if you're someone that's using one of these services, rethink what's going on. Do you really need the artificial numbers? Can you handle just an or organic account? Um, for me, it's social media. You should be able to just socially build the following you want. Plus, Instagram is actually remodeling their profile so that the follower count isn't this prominent number. It's actually shoved in the corner and they're trying to feature the people themselves more. We also see this with them doing the more verified accounts where you can actually verify who you are, get the blue check mark, and make sure that you're a real person. I think they're going to the next level with this, which is pretty, uh, pretty awesome in my opinion. I don't know what you guys think. You wanna yell at me down below? Go yell at me, let's do this. Um, in some oddball news, this woman in Florida has been yelling at photographers that have been using, let's play this video, sorry guys, sorry this is live. She's just been yelling at these people, screaming that they've been using the park, disturbing the peace. She lives apparently next door to the park. Um, other photographers have said that she turned on the power washer, spraying them to get them out of the space. Um, when you play this video, you can hear the kids crying because it was just a family photo shoot and she is just going bananas. So let's uh, turn that off. And I don't know how you guys feel about this. It is a public space. What's the difference between someone sitting on that bench or someone shooting someone sitting on that bench, right? Um, they're using for business purposes. Should there be money uh, licensing or, or permits or something? Should there be a, a system in place for that? I'm not so sure. It's a public space, and I think it gives photographers that don't have a space to shoot a shot at building a career. Also, you get to shoot in an area in which people live in. They, you know, here in New York, we have uh, like the Brooklyn Promenade and uh, Washington Square Park, and there's always like tons of engagement shoots going on at the same time. Central Park is always littered with that kind of stuff. Not that that's littered, littered but uh, if you're just trying to enjoy the day or go through the park and use it as an actual park, you do see these uh, spectacles going on. So I see both sides of it, but I don't think you need to get to the level of making kids scream and cry just for someone trying to take photos in a park. It's not a federal case, calm it down. Uh, my opinion, just saying. Uh, let me know what you guys think about that. Are you someone that shoots in a park? I wanna know if you've got into any, should, tell me some funny stories that have happened. Have any security tried to stop you? I've had security my whole life try to stop me on doing things. So uh, let's share some stories down in the comments. Um, in some other news, the Nikon Z mount apparently has more capabilities than they thought. It can go down to 0.65 uh, f-stops, which is kind of crazy. So when they introduced this line with the Nikon Z uh, full frame mirrorless, they said it can go to 0.95 with a 58 millimeter Nocta that they produced. Um, but their French marketing team has said, no, in theory, they can go to 0.65. I don't know if you really need that. For, for one, 095 is already razor thin depth of field. We're talking about maybe a half inch, a little bit more maybe, of space that'll be in focus on the plane of uh, sight. So 065, even thinner, making focusing a nightmare, uh, unless you want that super thin bokeh looking uh, type. Uh, I don't know what the actual advantage that would be. Faster shutter speeds, obviously, lower ISOs, obviously, but if less stuff's in focus, Maybe you're someone that likes to shoot soft focus, I don't know. But I will say that the 095 lenses are a lot of money. So the 065 lenses will be a lot of money. Um, but it's pretty cool. So what, what it's basically is saying that the Z mount is the widest diameter mount system for full frame mirrorless that's out there right now, allowing for lens design of such. Pretty exciting uh, to see just where technology is building from. Speaking of which, Harvard has put this out, which I think is really cool. Nerd alert here. Harvard makes a nano service that fixes chromatic aberration in lenses. What does that mean? Well, pretty much they've been saying that 
Uh, we haven't changed our lens technology in like, since like the 1700s. And they're saying that this is what chromatic aberration looks like. It's color fringing. You have uh, murky lines between color shifts. And they said that this is what it normally looks like. Here's what they got it to. I mean, that is beautiful. If you're someone that shoots really tight and likes really sharp craziness, this might be something you're excited in because years ago in digital, when you shot something like a snowy mountain, uh, the white of the snow and the brown of the mountain in between, you get these like magenta fringes. And we're still seeing some of that today in a lot of lenses and a lot of, um, a lot of shots out there in general. And if you're someone that shoots high res and you know huge landscapes or really gets in there tight or crops in tight or wants to see something really in the, in the nooks and crannies of your images, odds are you're gonna see some chromatic aberration in there somewhere. Uh, this coating, uh, it's... I'm pretty excited about it. Speaking of nerd news, uh, check this out. If you got a minute today, I'm sorry, I keep looking down because I'm doing this whole thing live, guys, I'm sorry. Check this video out. So this is the longest time lapse ever shot in space. So it's two revolutions of the Earth. And what's cool about this is the 15 minute long video, but you actually see the dark side, the light side. And as it's going on, you actually get these labels for all the cities, all the uh, countries that is passing over. So it'll come up with Manila and it'll show you like where on the earth this exists. It'll definitely make you humble as to part of your existence in this world, not to get a little too meta on you guys or whatever. But um, if you have a minute to take a break today, put this on, eat your lunch and just zone out a little bit. It's pretty amazing. And, and it really makes you think about how grand scale things are, uh, which I think we kind of lose you know, focus when we're like in our phones like this all day. So take a minute, watch that video. I guarantee you it's worth it. Um, and to get a little nerdy, stay on the same lines of nerd, my man Gavin Hoey over here uh, did a video on color calibration. So he's showing you how to keep your colors consistent from the shot to the screen, to the print, to other uh, screen formats. And he's basically explaining to you what's going on when you color calibrate. And let me tell you something, I've been through a lot of demos and seminars on color calibration and they will put you to sleep. This is an eight minute long video with Gavin Hoey, who's one of the most entertaining guys ever. A lot of fun, always makes things fun. And color calibration is something, whoops. Color calibration is something <laughs> that, um, that I think affects every photographer out there, especially if you're starting out and you're not even sure. You, you think that everything should match, but it doesn't. Um, he'll tell you why. And I'll take you through the steps to make it all clean. Because how many times have you shot something, made, did some editing on your screen, got it to your phone, it looks completely different, or got a print made, and it's even way more different than you thought that it should be based on what you saw on your screen. Or you're editing it based on what you're seeing, but that's not really what the image looks like. So get on this video, Adorama TV on YouTube. And just so you guys know, we also have this, which I really want you guys to be aware of. On Adorama's Instagram, we have IGTV. So right here, in phone format are plenty of demos and um, videos that I go through gear reviews and philosophy of the game. I mean, you have myself doing live shoots, black and white portraiture, Fuji, uh, Fujifilm Instax, or Vanessa Joy talking about speed posing with brides, or she did nighttime portraits. Um, I made the event space look like a dingy bar. I shot with the new GFX 50R. Vanessa Joy just released weird things. She packs for wedding days. I mean, there's really cool stuff in there. So if you're already on our Instagram, just go to the first circle in the highlights where it says IGTV and um, just enjoy some, uh, some demos that fit your phone, okay? Um, I know vertical format isn't for everybody, but some people do like it. Some people are being raised on it. Think about that, okay? And finally, I just want to say thank you to Dana Goldstein for this comment on last week's Rewind. They said, I have Magnum Contact Sheets, which is a book, which is fascinating both for the opportunity to see how the photographer got to the final shot and for the narrative from the photographers themselves. It's chronological as well. So for those of you who love photography history, it's a wonderful read. Well, guess what, Dana? Ugh, I picked it up. So this came because last week I told you guys about Magnum starting their own online uh, education services. Uh, they're doing a 10 video course on street photography. Well, this is one of their thick, amazing books. Uh, chronological, yes, it starts out in 1933 and goes to 2010. And it really is all the contact sheets from these amazing photographers and these amazing times in our lives in this world, well, not in our lives, I mean, some of this stuff definitely predates me, um, 
but you see the notes, you see the circles, the edits, you see um, the notes of uh, other people um, telling them what they should have gone for or editors or things like that. So it really gets you inside the mind of working professionals that have made some serious dents out there in the world. I'm talking about people from Life Magazine, things like that. 139 contact sheets, 69 photographers. Uh, I recommend this book. Dana, thank you so much for recommending it. This is amazing. Please feel free, everyone, to recommend more stuff to me, but don't let me go broke buying all this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, but this is a definitely a great read. Thank you so much for suggesting it. Let me know what you guys think out there, okay? Uh, what do you think about this park situation? Do you think that uh, photographers can be a nuisance? Do you think that photographers overstep their bounds in public spaces? I mean, we are photographers, right? So we're kind of a little biased, but do you see the other side of that argument? What do you think about Instagram calling these uh, fake number accounts? Do you think it shouldn't even be an issue? You think they should just leave it alone, let people just do what they want to do with the platform? Or are you someone that goes, no, I'm tired of people getting ahead in the game by doing shady things? Is it shady? I don't know, you know? Me, I'm a believer in organic. I believe in social, in, in social measures. You know, if people like something, they'll hit like, it'll get boosted up in the algorithm and we'll see more of it. But there's definitely little loopholes in, uh, whole shots in there in the game. Uh, are you guys excited about the Nikon Z mount? Do you think that 065 is something you'd be interested in? Is that an, uh, enough depth of field for you? I don't, I don't know. Um, check out that time-lapse video of the earth. Um, go check out Gavin's video, check out IGTV, and I'll see you guys next time. Just hit like, subscribe, bells, hit everything except this symbol, okay? And we'll be cool. All right, guys, uh, thank you so much. I'll see you next week.